Hi, this is the Optimum Academy, part 101, video number four, high blood pressure and left ventricular hypertrophy in the Optimum series on the heart. I'm Minus Joannides, Chief Medical Director, so let's get started. So as we've discussed, we have the heart as the main pump in the body, and it pumps blood through the arteries, which are designated here in red, <clears throat> and blood returns from the body to the heart via the veins in blue. So as we've noted before, the right heart is the low pressure zone of the body, <coughs> designated here on the left, and the left heart is designated in right, which is the high pressure zone of the body. So high blood pressure, abbreviated HBP in APSs is also called systemic hypertension. And high blood pressure is very common in life insurance applicants. <clears throat> high blood pressure is when the blood pressure is elevated above normal and we'll use 130 over 80 as our basis. So blood pressures higher than that are considered high. If untreated, High blood pressure over time can cause all kinds of problems in the body. <clears throat> it can cause left ventricular hypertrophy, so the heart walls get larger in order to compensate and deal with the high blood pressure. It can precipitate a stroke. It can affect the kidneys and cause kidney disease and all kinds of other issues. Hypertensive crisis is designated when the blood pressure is super high and that needs immediate treatment. Often people go to the emergency room or the hospital to get treated with IV or other medications on an immediate basis in order to bring the blood pressure down. So what are treatments for high blood pressure? Typically a water pill of some sort is prescribed like a thiazide diuretic or furosemide, which is a loop diuretic, also called Lasix. And what water pills do is they deplete the body of sodium ion that attaches to water and retains water in the body. So the water pill helps the body get rid of extra salt water and fluid and hopefully helps bring the blood pressure down. It often is used in conjunction with other medications. And I've listed some of the typical high blood pressure medications that you will likely see in an APS when somebody is being treated for high blood pressure. So things like atenolol, brand name Tenormin, is a beta blocker. And that's often used to treat high blood pressure and it also slows the rate of the heart. So people on a beta blocker typically have a slower or lower heart rate. Lisinopril, brand name is Zestril, is called an ACE inhibitor. And there are other ACE inhibitors as well, but that type of medication is also typically used to treat high blood pressure. And Atenolol and lisinopril could be used together to treat a person's high blood pressure. Another type of high blood pressure medication is like Valsartan, Valsartan, Diavan, which is an angiotensin II receptor blocker, also called an ARB. Uh, this can also be used with other medications above, and it is often used in people to prevent any renal problems. A drug like Correg is a beta blocker that may be used for hypertension, but also can be used in other things such as heart failure. So if somebody is on that, you may want to investigate and see if there are any other issues in addition to just high blood pressure. Of course, a low salt diet, if salt is contributing to the hypertension, would be a good idea as well. 
some people either will tell you or you may detect in the APS that they might have what's called white coat hypertension. So some applicants know that they've had high blood pressure readings in the past, but say it's only when they go to the doctor's office and are uh, under the stress of being evaluated by a medical doctor, nurse, or, or whomever is in the medical office. So some people will attribute their elevated blood pressure to those episodes that they <laughs> feel are due to stress. Some people then can check their blood pressures at home to see if their blood pressure is normal the rest of the time. However, even if somebody has, quote, white coat hypertension, they still may be at risk if the blood pressure rises frequently with any stress and treatment of high, pressure, high blood pressure may still be indicated. So I wanna mention, uh, since we are going to be discussing high blood pressure and how it can contribute to left ventricular hypertrophy. And I'm going to show you a e couple of EKGs to demonstrate that. Just uh, what an EKG uh, contains. And to the left, circled in red, is what's called a standardization. So when an EKG is done, a standardization is done to make sure that the machine is appropriately set so that 10 millimeters of rise is equal to one millivolt or one small m big V. So that's a normal standardization. To the right of that is a typical P wave, QRS, T wave, complex, which is one beat recorded on an electrocardiogram. And you will notice that 10 of those boxes going up and down equals one millivolt, or the regular standardization. So you get a sense of what a heartbeat would look like and how big it usually is. So the third uh, diagram to the bottom shows that not only do we measure height on an EKG for the millivolts, but on the x-axis, we also measure time or how the beats are recorded in time. So each of those little boxes is 0 0.04 seconds. Each box is one millimeter. So five boxes would be 0.2 seconds. <clears throat> And the PR interval, so the P wave until the R wave starts, is typically 0.2 seconds or less. So in EKG and left ventricular hypertrophy, or LVH, you can see to the left is a normal EKG. In red, I've circled the typical uh, complex of the P wave, QRS, T wave, to the left on the normal EKG. To the right, I'm showing the voltage for LVH with a strain pattern. You can see circled in red in the gray EKG to the right. The QRS is much taller than in the normal EKG to the left. And those, air, the area in the smaller circle within the larger circle, that's the ST segment and T wave, which is obviously different than in the normal EKG. And that is called a strain pattern. So when you look at these two EKGs and compare the left EKG, which is normal, and the right, which shows much larger voltage with changes in the ST segment in the smaller circle, and T wave changes as well, which is called the strain pattern. 
that EKG would typically be read as LVH, voltage for LVH with a strain pattern. Often what's done if LVH is uh, considered is to get an echocardiogram to measure the left ventricular walls of the heart to assess for LVH. If both the interventricular septum, that's the septum between the right and left ventricle, and the left ventricular posterior wall in diastole are measured and enlarged, so over 1.1 centimeters or 11 millimeters, the term concentric LVH is often used to show that it is present. Sometimes only one wall or the apex of the heart is hypertrophied. So if just the septum, you might call it septal hypertrophy, or if the apex is hypertrophied, that would be called apical hypertrophy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy may run in families and be associated with premature death. If you look at the picture at the bottom, you can see the left ventricle is in red to the right of the heart diagram. And in the left picture, which is the normal size, the ventricular septum and the, the exterior wall of the left ventricle is in a normal configuration. Compare that to the picture to the right, which shows that the septum is very thickened, as is the exterior ventricular wall. So in a cardiomyopathy such as this, there's a very limited chamber of the left ventricle to accept and pump blood. And so that's why we have a major problem. Also, in cardiomyopathy, the arrangement of the cells in those walls can be disorganized and cause all kinds of additional problems as well. So if you hear the term hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you'll know what the problem is. A super thickened left ventricular wall uh, such as this. You may also hear the term athletic heart. So what's the difference between left ventricular hypertrophy and an athletic heart? And some people use the term athletic heart when really they are not athletes. So playing golf or occasional tennis uh, does not cause one to have an athletic heart or enlargement of the walls of the left ventricle. An athletic heart might refer to someone who does regular strenuous exertion in competition like a competitive professional athlete, a triathlete, they participate in Ironman competition, or they do competitive biking or rowing or things like that. And depending on the type of activity that they participate in, there may be slight differences in the configuration of the heart. So people that do endurance training may have a slightly different heart configuration than people that do strength training, like weightlifters, et cetera. So if you hear the term athletic heart, you need to look closely to see if the person really is an athlete or is this more likely just due to hypertension and the person has LVH due to high blood pressure? That completes this episode. Please uh, follow up with us and continue on in our Heart 101 series.